Hello everyone, it's Mike here and I'll be sharing with you today the financial calculator that I use while taking my CFA exams, along with some few tips of how to use this calculator. The CFA Institute allows only two types of calculator for the exam, either the Texas Instrument VA2+, including the Professional, and the HP12C, including the Platinum. For the HP calculator, I've never seen anyone use it, and the first time I saw this calculator is while preparing this video, so I highly recommend using the Texas Instrument. Most study notes providers include Texas Instrument instruction in their notes, so usually CFA candidates use the Texas Instrument. You have two calculators that you could use during the exam. You have the Texas Instrument BA2 Plus and the Texas Instrument BA2 Plus Professional. Both have similar features and function, however the Professional costs much more. From my basic Amazon search, the TA Plus costs $37, whereas the Pro costs $50. By the way, this is Canadian dollar, not real money. So for the additional 30% in price, you get some few additional calculation features and you have a slot for the battery, whereas the Plus you need the screwdriver to change the battery. I personally have the regular PLUS calculator, and I've been using this calculator since 2012 and never faced any issue or even changed the battery. So in my opinion, they are the same, and if you want to save a couple of bucks, just go for the BA2 PLUS. So for the tips, I'll be using my own calculator. It might look a bit different from the one you saw in the picture, because mine is just an older version, but the function and buttons are exactly the same. So when you first buy the calculator, as you can see, you have two digits after the decimal point. So I advise you to change it to 9. Many CFA instructors tell you to change it to either 4 or 9. However, my opinion, change it to 9. It's much easier. So what you do is you press 2nd, 2nd, then format, which is point. Then it asks you how many decimal points. Say 9. Then you press enter. So now it has nine decimal points. So if you divide, let's say eight, whatever numbers, we get zero point and everything after the decimal point. So for my second tip, it's how to reset and clear the calculator. It's an important function because the calculator in general memorizes all the numbers that we input. So it is important to clear all the info before we start a new problem. So for the reset function, what we do is we press second, then reset, which is plus or minus. And it asks us, we say yes, enter. So now we reset the calculator back to the original function. Now we change the decimal format. So second, format, nine, enter. And to clear out our numbers in the calculator, we have two ways that we could do that, each for a separate function. So for the function, when we're using the time value of money, what we do is we press second, future value, this is where we reset all those inputs back to zero. We'll see later on today how to input numbers into this function. And to clear out the cash flow, we press cash flow, then second, clear. Now the cash flows are cleared. So we have two major ways to clear either. Clear the uh, time value of money or the cash flow function. So for the time value of money function, we have first N as the number of periods, IY as interest rates, PV as present value, PMT as uh, payment and FV as future value. Let's take this quick example for a bond to check out how to input the numbers here. So we have a three year bond with a face value of $1,000, coupon $60, with a discount rate of 10%. What's the present value? So let's fill it out. So first we press three, then N, so it's three years. Then we have 1,000 as face value, so 1,000 future value. Coupon payment 60, so 60 payment. And we have a discount rate of 10%. We input 10% as 10, not as 0 0.1. So we put 10 interest rates and we compute CT present value. And we get minus 900 at the present value. So for a quick note and maybe a reflex to develop is that future value and payment usually have the same sign, whereas present value have the opposite sign. For example, in the question we just saw, future value and payment were positive, whereas present value was negative. So think of it as credit or debit or maybe inflows and outflow. The PV has an opposite sign of the FV. So in this question, payment occurred at the end of the period. However, you could get questions in the exam where the payment occurs at the beginning of the period. So you need to switch the calculator from ordinary annuity to an annuity due. So to switch it with the calculator, we press second, then payment, 
as you can see it's set on end press second again and enter now it's beginning and you can see this little pgn here so if we want to calculate now the present value with uh, an annuity due press compute present value we get minus 915 so if you want to switch it back to ordinary annuity we press the same process second payment second enter and the bng was cleared so in the exam if you get a question with payment occurring at the beginning of the period switch the calculator to beginning mode however when you finish the question directly switch back the calculator to end mode because further question payment will be as ordinary annuity also make sure to clear out the numbers that we inputted in the calculator the calculator memorized the numbers that we had so if we recall we press rcl future value as you can see it's still 1000 Record payment it's still 60 so make sure to clear it out you press second and future value it's cleared out everything is zero so recall future value now it's zero recall payment zero everything is back to zero and when we have different cash flows we use the cf function let's check out this problem together we have the following cash flow and we want to calculate that net present value so how we do it first we press cf it opens cf zero place it at zero press enter then we go downwards you can see we have c01 so we input 1000 press enter again then we go down here it show us the frequency so we have only one frequency then we go down again we have c02 02 is 1500 press enter frequency here we can either put two or we can just keep it as one so we keep it as one then we go down c03 also 1500 enter then we press npv get interest rate so we put interest rate as 10 enter then we go downwards we have npv we press compute we got 3275 so this is our number at the end make sure to clear out what we have in the cash flow function so we press cash flow then second clear now the numbers are cleared out so if we check them out they're all back to zero and for the other general functions that we have we have raised to the power so we press let's say 9 raised to the power of 3 we get it this is 1 over x so if you want to divide 1 divided by 9 so we press 9 then 1 divided by 9 so we get 0 0.11 here it's also have 9 we press this one it's squared so directly it's squared it and also to open parentheses let's say you want to say 9 raised to the power of 0 0.5 plus 0 0.9 close parentheses equal so we get 9 raised to the power of 1.4 for example and we have the radical and the percentage and for the last function i'll be showing you today is how to save the number and then recall it back so let's say we're gonna save 99 we press st0 which is save we're gonna save it as the first number so if we press now recall rcl 1 we get 99 we can save it throughout all the numbers so let's say we've saved 88 and we also want to save it as the second so now if you want to call recall the second we get 88 and we recall rcl the first we get 99. if you found this video beneficial please make sure to hit the like button and if you have any questions or problems you're facing difficulty solving please leave a comment and i'll be happy to assist thanks again and see you next time